It's interesting, all of these big summits, all of these events. I'm always curious as to how much is actually agreed at the summit and how much of it is just rubber stamping what's gone beforehand. Do you think there has been a significant move forward thanks to yesterday's meetings? I think a, a lot of the value of um, summits and these set piece events is that they create a focal point, which uh, means that there's a deadline by which the various bureaucrats have to uh, prepare things and agree things. So um, whilst it's easy to say, well, is it, is it really very likely that that much in the way of decisions was uh, made by the leaders at the summit themselves? I think that's a little bit unfair in that it, it, it's important to create that focal point. Uh, otherwise, nothing ever gets done what the West was sort of thinking about in terms of how well Russia was doing. I've, I've been reading recently the number of think pieces and uh, pieces of analysis that were saying that Russia would take Kiev in hours as soon as they invaded Ukraine. That seems to now uh, have turned a corner. Last night, the prime minister uh, told another television channel that he thinks that Ukraine could actually win this war. Is that likely? Well, it's obviously very difficult for us sitting here, uh, you know, in the in the UK, a long way away, and the people in the battlefield. I mean, the information about these things is relatively sparse. But it does seem to me that, from a political perspective, we've reached the point at which the possibility of Ukraine actually winning outright now has to come onto the table. Um, for a long time, that seemed truly fanciful, and now it's the kind of thing which uh, politics has to engage with. Uh, the um, I. I, I feel a little, little bit like there was some overcompensation from the very rapid collapse of the Afghan uh, forces. And uh, so the Western intelligence agencies had suggested that the Afghan forces might hold on for quite a long time. And actually, they collapsed almost immediately. Uh, and I, I think perhaps there was a little bit of overcompensation of saying, well, you know, we better assume that they collapse almost immediately here in the Ukraine. Uh, because in, and, and so I think that that was something of that. There's also undoubtedly the fact that the uh, Western forces had trained the Ukrainians for an insurgency. So the assumption was the Russians would win eventually, but then maybe the Ukrainians would bleed them out over time. I've seen some analyses suggesting that they were trained to try to kill uh, eight Russians a day. If they could kill eight or more Russians a day, then eventually that would make it intolerable for the Russians to stay. But in, they're killing more like 400 Russians a day at the moment. So the success of the Ukrainians has been absolutely spectacular. And of course, they've had a long time to prepare for this. And it's, they've known the Russians are coming since 2014. And Ukraine's a large place. It's not like some of the other places that the Russians pushed over, like Georgia, which were much smaller. So there's a lot of the Ukrainians, about a third of the population of uh, of Russia. Um, a lot of them had uh, quite strong military training. So perhaps it shouldn't be as much of a surprise to people as it was. Also, probably the Russian military, which had been had quite a bad reputation back into the uh, 80s and 90s, um, it's maybe people overreacted to the way it did quite well in Syria. And they've kind of thought, oh, the Russians have become much more powerful again, whereas actually mm -hmm. it seems that some of that was exaggerated. The Russians are, um, have, seem to have failed to have gained most of their strategic objectives at this point. Perhaps if they can finally finish off Mariupol, they'll establish that land corridor between the Crimea uh, back into Russia. And they might think of that as a worthwhile objective. Up around Kiev, they seem to be uh, having some bad problems. There's some Ukrainian counterattacks capturing some uh, Russian forces in a pocket uh, and um, so on. But perhaps the bigger story is that because things have stabilized for quite a long time, you then get into a situation of attrition. And in a battle of attrition, the... It seems, at least from the data that we have, uh, that the Russians are likely to lose because they just won't be able to sustain the, um, their fighting intensity for long enough. Uh, and although they now it could be that the Ukrainians would run out of Western weapons. And so things like the uh, um, Boris Johnson's announcement of the extra 6,000 and the package of additional weapons that the, uh, Russia, that the Americans have agreed to supply are quite important for sustaining uh, mm. the Ukrainian fight for a while. Also, and if they can do that, then the Russians are likely only to be able to, it seems like their actual ability to sustain fighting intensity is already uh, fallen away, according to some yeah. of the analyses, and they may start to collapse altogether within about a month.